Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is going to be my non-spoilery Star Wars Episode 7 review. Now, most of you might not have seen it yet. I am going to do a spoiler review later in the week with Easter eggs. There is a new round of the giveaway. I'm still giving away free movie tickets, so all you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. It's a gift certificate for the value of two IMAX tickets, which is about 50 bucks. But let's get going. Initial takeaway. Totally love this movie. I totally expected to like it going into it. There wasn't anything that completely disappointed me. Yeah, there were a few things that I felt could have been better. This is very much a J.J. Abrams movie, so if you don't like J.J. Abrams movies, then you'll probably have the same complaints that you have of other J.J. Abrams movies. Now, I feel like across the board, all the characters are perfect, especially the new characters. They're some of the most interesting characters to come into the Star Wars universe that I've ever seen. I don't want to throw original trilogy or prequel characters under the bus, but I feel like Kylo Ren is the character that Anakin Skywalker was meant to be during the prequels. He's not your typical villain, he has very complex motivations, and I cannot wait to see his character develop through episode 8 and 9 just like the other characters are. And that's one of the best things about the characters is that there's no clear good or evil, like everyone is very, very complex. A lot of you guys that have been tweeting at me at the movie about Poe Dameron say that he's your favorite new character. You know, you can't wait to hear more about him. I would say of all the characters, he's the closest to being lawful good in terms of alignment. You know, very pulpy, very Flash Gordon type of character. Always thinks of his friends first, never buckles under pressure, always happy to throw himself into danger to help someone out. Finn is hilarious, he gets all the best funny moments, John Boyega absolutely crushed it, and as heartbreaking as some of the twists are, you feel that instant connection between him and the other main characters. Like, you cannot wait to see them do more stuff together. If you have seen the movie, then it's probably no surprise that Daisy Ridley is my favorite character coming out of this, Ray's character. Now, because this is supposed to be a non-spoiler review, all I'll say is that she completely succeeds in turning a lot of the tropes of the Star Wars universe on their head. She is the hero that you're looking for, and in being a hero, she doesn't undercut any of the other characters either. Like, no one character gets development at the expense of another character. Nobody gets thrown under the bus, despite fist shaking you might hear in the back row. The real task of this movie was to reignite the Star Wars universe to create something that's completely independent from the other Star Wars movies while at the same time honoring them with a certain amount of continuity. Now, it doesn't completely throw the prequel stuff away, but it mostly invokes things from the original trilogy. So when you're looking for Easter eggs, mostly think about original trilogy stuff. But Abrams completely succeeded at the task. I, f I feel one of the weaknesses of the movie, one of the very few weaknesses, is that there are a couple leaps in logic that the movie asks you to make, but I feel like the only reason that happens is because they cut a lot of scenes. All of Abrams' films have this real sense of kinetic energy that this Star Wars movie definitely has, but in order to do that, you have to lose a lot of connective tissue that you find in films that move a little bit slower, a little more, more deliberately. So one of the big strengths of the movie also leads to one of its weaknesses. Seriously, the movie's a little under two and a half hours. If it were like a three hour movie, I think it'd feel like there's less connective tissue that's missing, just in terms of logic and drop plot points. But usually you can forgive that, especially if you're seeing it for the first time. You know, maybe if it's the fifth time you're seeing the movie, you might start pointing out some of the flaws a little bit more. And I think it'll be easier to compare the quality of this film to episode 8 when that's released, just because this is so different from the other Star Wars movies, just in terms of visual style, what's going on in the galaxy, that I think it's like comparing apples to oranges to try and compare this to the prequels or the original trilogy. But I will say that Empire, still my favorite Star Wars movie, this is my second favorite Star Wars movie now. What about BB-8? We have to talk about him a little bit though. He has to fill some very large tread marks for R2-D2. And I actually just found out, I laughed so hard, Bill Hader and Ben Schwartz, who was John Raffio from Parks and Rec, did the voice for BB-8. I mean, I mean, they, they modified their voices quite a bit. But Abrams said that when they were creating the droid BB-8, they wanted a droid companion that made sounds that children could mimic. That, you know, you could, like you could see little kids walking around making the sounds. So whenever you see BB-8 rolling around, just picture John Raffio and Bill Hader just making funny noises into like a little microphone. And even though you do connect with the human performances the most, there is a lot of motion capture characters like Maz Kanata or Supreme Leader Snoke. I feel like Lupita was awesome. Andy Serkis's performances always go without saying. He is one of the most amazing motion capture artists in the world. Snoke is a good example of a character that you can't really talk about with getting into spoilers, so I'll talk about him more during my Easter egg video. But there is going to be a lot to unpack from this movie, because it in no way answers every single question that you have. Like, it, all of you actually, here's my question for you guys. Write it in the comments. What was your biggest question coming out of the movie, or, or maybe even going into the movie? Did that change going in and coming out? Like, were there big questions that you had that the movie didn't answer? 
it's the intention of Lucasfilm to like slowly answer some of these questions through the trilogy in the spin-off films, but a lot of the expanded material too. So like the novels will pick up a lot of the slack. Now, some people might consider that lazy storytelling, but I just feel like it's fun for us to try and figure those things out. Like sometimes it's worse when everything gets explained. So take that as a challenge, Tumblr. Start answering as many questions as possible. I know I haven't talked a lot about the original trilogy characters. Uh, there, there's only so much that we can talk about them, you know, without getting into spoilers. But Han and Leia, like we've seen them in the trailer, so I'll talk about them. There is some very poignant, cry-worthy moments that they have in the film. And without necessarily explaining what the dynamic is between them, there is so much energy between them when they're on screen together. It's so amazing. But in the realist of terms, one of the other big jobs of this movie was to pass the torch to the new characters. It did an amazing job of doing that. So as excited as you are to have seen this movie, if you haven't seen it yet, when you're walking out of it, you will probably be even more excited to see what happens in episode 8. Now here's the next thing you need to get really excited about too. Like if there's if there's certain J.J. Abram tropes that you're not really happy about, like some of the, the film techniques that he uses, he's amazing at finding talent, writing characters, but the, you know, there's always like, you know, minor techniques like, like lens flare he always gets criticized for. Or there are even like a few of the CG scenes that kind of take you out of the action just because they're like, they're just too overblown. But remember, Ryan Johnson is directing and writing episode eight. So J.J. Abrams will only loosely be involved. So if some of your bigger complaints are J.J. Abrams specific complaints, then those have already been answered. So there's no need to worry. What I'm probably gonna be doing next is a spoilery review with Easter eggs, like just like a spoilery Easter egg video, kind of more in like the top 10 WTF format that I normally do. But I'll also do videos for each of the big characters. There, we could talk about them all day. I know I said Ray's character is my favorite. Kylo Ren also like really close second with Poe Dameron. Like they're all just so amazing. So if you haven't already, let me know in the comments who is your favorite character coming out of this film and have you seen it more than once already? I know it's only been out for a couple days, but I'm always curious to see if like anybody just stays in the theater and watches multiple viewings. Just to end things, there was this really huge comment that Lucas made when he was making the prequels where he's like, they rhyme, you know, they rhyme with the original trilogy. That's a way of saying that there are a lot of familiar story beats, familiar characters, familiar things, you know, like visually and thematically they rhyme with the original trilogy. So this film also rhymes a lot with the original trilogy. But you could also say that at certain points it almost rhymes a little too much, but I don't, I don't think that that hurts the film at all. I think that's part of the intention. It's just meant to be the connective tissue between the other films that have come before in this new universe that they're spinning out. So I'm expecting the newer films to go into much more uncharted territory, just in terms of places we visited, the way environments look, the types of ships that we see. I mean, it's always going to be familiar because it's Star Wars, but it's a big galaxy and we have not seen all of it, not even close yet. Now, I know I said Empire is my favorite Star Wars movie still. I'm curious to see if Episode 8 winds up being the Empire of the new trilogy. I, I feel like Ryan Johnson is sweating, just feeling like he's going to be compared to Empire so much. So while you wait for my spoilery Star Wars Easter egg video to post, you can click here for all my other Episode 7 videos. I have like a giant playlist. And you can click here to learn all about the 12 days of Deadpool. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody, let's high five. I will see you in line for Star Wars again in a couple days.